people paint, it's a very emotional thing. And I think your emotion depicts what your style is. That could be a long-lasting style, or that could be a style that is just for the moment, how you felt at that moment. You might want to slash paint around because you're angry, or you might want to get a really beautiful mood with glowing lights because you're feeling, who knows what, romantic or um, some special memory in a special place that you want to capture just at the right moment. Maybe you want to capture a person and you want to be very clear about who they are and you do their painting extremely photorealistic. Or you might just want to focus in on something like maybe their eyes, the expression in them, but you don't want the rest of their face to be that clear. So you have the right, the privilege to paint any way you want to at any given moment, and you don't have to get pinned down to a certain style. So sometimes I like to do very realistic portraits. And other times I like to kind of make things very expressionistic, where I fiddled with these colors a bit. This was kind of expressionistic. I exaggerated things on the kitty. This was very expressionistic because it was something I was very passionate about. I felt that these times were not happy times for my son and I, waiting for the bus early in the morning to pick him up. And there's a story behind that, but nevertheless, we had our doggy then. She's passed since. And so I did this in a very expressionistic way. Same thing with this little story here, someone waiting to sit on the bench in the park. And while I love this style, I also like just a very impressionistic look. And this is actually my favorite style. It doesn't matter to me that I've carried green up reflecting into the tree so that you don't have every leaf in the tree described, but you get the gist of it. There's something back there. You know this water is here and it's reflecting. There's bushes here, obviously. You see the colors changing, but you don't have to have every single thing in detail. And I love that style. I look at this painting all the time. So how will I paint my painting today? Will I just do it the same way all the time? No, I will not because my mood changes. Sometimes I actually paint something very realistic. They're all representational. You know what I've painted here. Even if I go into a little bit of the abstract, you still know that there's buildings back here and these are trees. So they're still representational. But how I paint on any given day is how I feel on any given day. Here's a painting of my parents. And I really enjoyed doing that. Let's get it out of the sunlight here so you can actually see it. And this was extremely representational, but not everyone is. Like I said before, the other painting of the water with my daughter and grandson was Certainly, we know it's them, but we change the colors and we try to kind of play with it a little bit. Over here is a painting that is, again, representational, but it's very impressionistic. Just the painting of the light. So, as you can see, my style varies quite a bit. So when people say, what's your style? I say, what's my mood? A big conundrum, acrylics or oils, which should it be? I don't know for sure. It's hard to decide which to do because you have to pack a different bag for every medium. I have a quickie one already packed with my watercolors in it because I have a different set that I use in watercolor when I'm painting inside the house and outside the house. But if I'm painting outside with 
oil or acrylic, I generally bring them back in. I don't want to leave them sitting in my car or inside the bag for too long because they dry out really fast. So that means I have to put together some brushes in order to go paint. So I'll probably grab my little brush kit that I have here and fill it up with different brushes. Let me turn this camera. So I've got some in there now. I always have a palette knife. I always have different brushes, but I really like these Ultrek series of the 09s. And I usually have a 209 and a 409 and a 609. Um, and then I have a couple of pointier brushes just in case I need to make some finer points. So brushes, paints, a water supply for my water mixable oils, possibly some kind of medium. Of course, you need whatever canvas you're going to be working on. And if you're going to use the free canvas like I do here, then I need to cut a piece and attach it to something so that I can easily attach it to my easel when I'm ready to paint. Do I want to bring a tripod or do I want to bring a French easel? There's so many things to consider depending on where I'm going. For instance, if the wind is really bad, I'll use the French easel. It's stronger. If I'm just going someplace like across the street and I don't want to take a bunch of heavy stuff, I might take my small tripod. So many things to consider. Up on top here, I have a lot of my easels. Some I've made myself and others I purchased. There's Pashad's up there. A big one I use at home. Smaller ones, I've got uh, Strata over there. It's a little one, but it's also very heavy. I wish it was made out of a lighter material. One day I may make one for myself another one. I have an idea of something I'd like to make. But anyway, we will see and you will be brought in when I decide what it is I'm going to do. Here's a picture of some of my little birdies, my five little babies that make all the noise in the background every time I'm doing a video. I decided I would paint a painting from some of the photos that I took the other day. So I hope you enjoy it. I think it's kind of pretty. I like the reflections and I love the effect of the light in it. So I have drawn this in, which is something I don't usually do because I want to make sure that this water is going back the way I need it to. This is all water going that way. That's important in this painting. There's gonna be a main tree up here and there's a couple of small trees going back this way as it goes back. Some darkness here that will kind of take the place of the buildings back there. I do not want to do detail on them at all. I just like their colors. There's a couple of porches over here that have a little orange in them. I don't care if you know they're exactly porches, but I'm going to put that color in there. There's going to be some big shadows coming through the water here, some big shadows over here, some right there, and then of course these trees are throwing shadows. Then we'll go into starting to put in some of the detail. I also want to get that reflection in the water. That's really important to me. In fact, I might even start with the water and then go to the big shapes. So the point of being an artist is to be creative. And if you pigeonhole yourself into just one style because you feel you have to do that in order to market your work, you're probably going to get bored with painting. You'll feel like you're just an assembly line. Don't worry about your style. Just worry about what you're working on, period. Even the famous artists all experimented with many different styles. We like to attribute them with just one style, but... Most of them spent their lifetime working in different ways, going to different places, painting with different artists to try to learn different things from each other, and they experimented with many different styles.
I'm keeping my paint damp so that I can blend into it. This is acrylic, but it is very blendable. It is not open acrylics. I do not want it to stay wet for a long time, but while I'm working on it, I use a little atomizer and spray it, keep it damp so that I can continue to blend all my colors into it. Get a little light in there where the clouds are and where the water goes back farther. It lightens up a little back there. Using all my different blues, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of thalo green, some titanium white as well as zinc white where I don't want it to get too light. Getting those trees on the right hand side established. So we've got our second layer on. We'll let this dry a bit and then move on to some more detail. So now we're putting in a little bit more detail. You see I'm putting some warmth into these reflections so that they look more lively and believable. And adjusting the colors. This paint is dry now, so it's easy to go right over it. So even though those trees in the back are not quite as light as I'm making them right now, they are farther back, so I want them to be lighter so that you see that there is some distance there. I'm also trying not to make it too warm back there as I want my warmer colors coming forward. A warm color has more yellow in it. You'll notice a cooler green works best in the background, whereas colors with for instance, yellow ochre or a little bit of cadmium yellow light coming forward look more realistic and give a feeling of more depth as we don't see much yellow when we go farther back. That's just natural phenomenon. The atmosphere kind of takes the yellow out. That's why mountains always look blue when they're far away. They're so unusual, these cypress trees. They have big, bulbous bottoms on them, and they, of course, can live in the water without getting ruined, which is why people like to use cypress wood. But they have very unusual shapes to them. So you'll notice that I really haven't put any detail in. These are just big shapes. And now I'm starting to put in a little bit of highlights here and there. If you squint your eyes, you will see dark, medium, and light shapes. And that's it. So now we'll start putting in some of the stems on the trees, a little bit of light on some of these roots down below. And this is the other half of the painting where you begin to work layer over layer until you're finished. You'll notice that in some areas where it's very dark, I put a light stem and in other areas where it's very light, I'll put a darker stem. This way you can see them. And I also try to put a little highlight on the stems the way the light would catch on them as they did in the real photo. So here's where we're at right now. I have a few more final details to put in this, and then I will show you the finished product. It's looking good so far. OK, 
Okay, it's all done. It looks a little pale because I have it laying flat here because it's no longer on its little structure. It's just a free piece of canvas. This is acrylic. Easy to blend if you use a little bit of a sprayer with a very fine mist and atomizer. Uh, what don't I like about it? Well, it's very representational and a little bit less abstract than I would like it to be. On the other hand, I think the colors are beautiful. I like the way the light is leading me here. The shape of the pond is leading me this way. All the light going that way. The tree branches leading me that way. The tree branches leading me that way. So I think I've got my effect in here, the effect of the light. So I do like that. I think the picture came very pretty. I think that the fact that I put some color in here helped to keep it from just being green and blue and yellow. I like the fact that I do not have these buildings back here detailed, but you know that there's structures back there and there's some sort of structures over here. So I think it was a successful painting. It is eight by 20. So I enjoyed doing it and I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you all next time. And remember, you can paint too. Aww.